W episode nine. Remember, WTF doesn't stand for what you think. We associate it with where's the fun, DFW. So we have um, a live studio audience this week. Yeah, check uh, us out. Just yeah, <laughs> but we have um, Brooke over here. We have Jody over here. Obviously, Clinton is always here, I'm offering not, his I'm little not, insights and bad dad jokes and all. Yeah, well, I think they're the best dad jokes, but <laughs> I have a camera. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, what's going on? First off, um, you know, I talked about my friend Laura last week. She started her chemo treatment. She's doing amazingly well. And we were expecting all week to hear, like, the worst. But um, just some nausea and all of that stuff. So, hang in there, Laura. We love you. Josh, you know, we're always here. So, um, call me if you need another drinking buddy. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of what we have to do. But last week, we talked about stage presence, if you remember. Um performers and you know basically how you move relate to your band members audience and all um you know we had velcro pygmies for those of you that came out they're a great example of what we talk about with stage presence and um the way they interact with the crowd each other just their performance on the stage but um this weekend we had the rock stars out there and it, it kind of sank in a little bit because uh rock stars are tomorrow mansfield and frisco um there are a few different levels of performers. First, there was like some acoustic that was up there. Then we had this band, the Myers. Their bass player was, I think, six. You know, a six-year-old girl, and she was just six. staring. And then she sang lead on one song, and she just staring up there playing. Oh, it's a little bitty bass, too, but it was cool as hell. Um, but it was three family members up there. Um, but then we had a band called Pink Slip, and... Um, they're a little bit more seasoned um, for that Frisco band. I think they've been playing together for about a year from what I understand, but they have this girl named Grace Figueroa. Um, I only know that because she just sent me a friend request. She's 18-year-old. She's the veteran of the group, I guess, but her little sister plays lead guitar, one of the lead guitars. Um, I think she's 14. And um, their other guitarist, I believe, is 16 years old. They have a bass player, but they were all getting it. And they, you could tell that they've been working on the stage presence because even yeah. like the, you know, you know, her little sister, I can't remember her name, that's playing the guitar or whatever. She's up there and she's, you know, throwing that guitar around everywhere. And then their other guitarist is holding it up like it's Slash and all of that. Is so, that the one with the pipes? I mean, she... she oh, really, yeah, that girl can sing. Yeah, you know, she was singing Heart. She was singing um, Guns N' Roses, stuff like that. So um, I will be using them. Um, to open up some shows for us, try to get them, you know, on a, who knows, maybe open up for, you know, a show with Back in Black or something like that, but just get them a little bit more Oof. visibility. But Man. super impressive to be able to see. Um, but, you know, that was a cool topic to touch on last week. We'll get on this week's topic. But um, to recap, you know, last week we had live band karaoke, new hours, 7.30 to 10.30. Again, that did really well. People were still... Um, trying to get songs in somewhere around 10.30. And, you know, it, it ended up being relatively late night. Keith Mitchell Band was playing out there from Billy Bob's, the house band from out there. He was Thursday. Um, I already mentioned the Velcro Pygmies, um, Love is War, opening up. Um, that was Friday. We actually left relatively early, wanted to go home and, you know, get some sleep. You know, we knew we had the grandkids, you know, coming, so sleep is at a premium. Um, but, again, they had a great show. Texas High Road, um, Hillary was out there Saturday just coming off of back surgery, Rodney Smith Band opening up for him, and when we got in there Sunday for the Rockstar show, Rodney Smith ended up leaving his guitar up on stage at Fat Daddy's. I'm like, what? who leaves the guitar, you know? So I got a text from him sometime, I think, Sunday night saying, hey, I think I may have left a guitar. I said, I have, have it in my truck, you know? Yeah. How I'm many, not going to sell it or anything, but, you know. How many drinks did he have? I, I do not know the answer. We were not up there on Saturday night to be able to see it. So um, it was a rel relatively low-key weekend for us. But um, we did go out there, I said, on Sunday for, you know, one thirty to or 1 to 3. And it was this kid, Trenton Page, was playing guitar out there. It was an acoustic kid who started up. I don't, I don't, he played three or four songs. He was impressive. I don't remember his name. Trenton Page ended up picking up with another band out there playing um, the Myers, I said, those, you know, six to eight year old, may, uh, maybe 10 year old Max, um, and then Pink Slip. So, um, gotta say thanks again to, you know, you know, my buddy Bobby came out there to support these kids. Bobby from Flash Mob was there. Um, Chris McLuhan, 
Um, he showed up, I guess, 30 minutes after the band stopped performing, but appreciate the effort, bud. Um, <laughs> it was, you know, he just shows up. He's like, oh, I thought they'd still be playing. So you should have had a look, you know. Um, but even, you know. Um, oh, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Kevin and um, Sonny actually made the trek out there, too. So it was kind of cool. I appreciate, you know, all of you coming in and supporting um, the parents, families, and friends and all. So um, that's the recap last week. This week, I might get a little bit more philosophical, but it'll make sense. Oh, no. I'm telling you. Um, but talking about value. Okay, so, um, you know, Quick definition I grabbed from Oxford, because you always got to quote where you're grabbing it from, is um, the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. You know, and they give an example, your support is of great value. And I thought that kind of ties into a lot of the topics we've had over the last couple of weeks is, you know, the expenses that venues go through, the bands, and, you know, even your guests. But think about what value do you bring? Um, as an employee at a company, are you providing the company value? Or are you just doing your job? Um, or do you do your job and exceed expectations, you know? And you think about, are you irreplaceable? You know, I always try to think about that in terms of, you know, even myself and my career where I've been is how easy is it to replace you? And from my perspective, you know, you know, it's <laughs> difficult to replace me. You know, I do a lot of stuff. And I try to make sure I'm providing that value, but... You know? right, let me, let me inter interject here. So uh, in my past lives, um, there was a good mentor that I had, and he, on this exact same uh, topic, he ran an agency, and he always said if, um, you know, the organization is run <coughs> correctly, um, any single person is always replaceable. Never think that you're not right. replaceable because somebody else, you know, you could get hit by a truck. Somebody else in that organization should be able to uh, step up and do your and job. And do your job, yeah. If, if, if it's done right. But um, I will say um, I don't think anybody could do your job, Mike. Um, they could. It might take a couple of people, but, you <laughs> yeah. know, just you talk about just from the band perspective and even the oh, cigars yeah. and all of that stuff. Um, yeah. It's what value to bring. and. I try to think in terms of that all the time, and I've always done that through my career, is what value are you bringing? Um, but, even you know, think about it outside of work. As a student athlete, maybe, you know, are you putting in the extra work as a teammate? I don't know if you guys all played sports at all growing up, but I used to talk to my girls because I coached girls softball <laughs> for years saying, you know, are you putting in the extra work? You know, my daughter was a pitcher, and she'd have to go to private lessons once a week, and then... We'd have to throw for 30 minutes on the front lawn every day. Um, but my catcher, this girl, Emily, who is now a coach on her own and um, a high school coach, but Emily used to show up to my daughter's, you know, my older daughter's pitching lessons and catch for her to put into work. And then we'd have batting lessons on top of that. But I'd encourage all of my girls, you know, like, are you putting in the extra work that, you know, or is it just, you know, your pitchers and catchers are the ones, you know, putting into work. So are you providing value to your team? As a customer or a live music supporter, you know, are you bringing value to the band? Or are you just, you know, showing up for them? And it, <sighs> supporting them and providing value to a band, I guess, are two different things. You know, and P.S., if you think about it, you know, well, I take pictures out there. Well, are you really providing value? You're just stroking an ego, you know, like, oh, I'm sending pictures to, you know, our, you know, the bands, or whatever, so that they can use. And I really don't see any bands using those pictures in marketing, you know, like, you know, Jody does a lot of our marketing here and creates a lot of our materials, but are you using band pictures? Like, the band is providing pictures, customers aren't providing, you know. Actually, sometimes you're going to get better pictures from customers just taking the pictures than what the bands have to offer. Um, yeah, at times there are. And ironically, some of the best pictures I see taken, and I see a lot from these bands, are people using their iPhones. Yeah. You know, like they're, I don't know the settings, they don't have to worry about all of the mechanical stuff and editing and all of that. But um, I know the bands typically send in pictures that, you know, they're either in a studio or in a setting using that. Um, 
or they just might use their logo or it's something like canned you know like that they'll use those images whatever i don't see too many bands like take sending a picture of their guitarist in a live performance and their bassist in a live performance and asking you to put it all together it's their right you yeah. know when they're asking for marketing stuff they're not using band material they might use some of it on their website but um you know i guess uh, are you spending money at their on their shirts and their merchandise i guess that provides a band value because then they can use their money to improve their production costs and all of that but um on top of that you're spending money on food and drinks you know or like i talked about a couple of weeks ago that provides value to the band because you're providing value to the venue and by send you know providing value to the venue and you know bringing in revenue they're going to want to book the band back again as well so um, think about are you a customer of live music you know are you a supporter of live music and what does that mean to be able to support these bands you know and um you know shoot even in you know a relationship you know do you provide value you just a, basically a drain on the system <laughs> you know i don't know i think we all know some people that you know they're just there yeah I you think know that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it you know everybody you know are you providing value you know and if you weren't there i guess would it matter and that's a full philosophical question so i don't care if you're at your job if you're at a you know live music venue if you're a fan of a band if you're a player on a team you know a student athlete if you're in a relationship if you weren't there would it matter and that's kind of a deep thought you know if it's like nah I can replace them, yeah. you know, then shit, you know, step up your game, provide some value, I guess you can kind of say. I don't know if that's too philosophical a thought for the week's conversation or whatever, but... <laughs> what do you think, um, Brooke? Yeah. I think it's good. I mean, I think with this, like, that's why I do with, like, the car shows and, like, I told him if y'all ever need anybody in like, because it's not part of my job oh that yeah you you're 100 I mean? percent right and you're yeah. at all car shows and yeah i help i volunteer at all of them registration usually but yeah it's like that's not part of it but it does add like to the organization some, yeah you have somebody who can or is willing i guess to do multiple things and there's multiple people here i think that do that so oh yeah and that's why one of the things i do love about this company is so many people wear different hats and yeah. they get involved in so many different parts of the organization to help out and step in um yeah especially the dynamics the way this company is but you're 100 percent right because i see you out at the car shows selling merch or doing registrations um you know it's th there's value in that yeah. you know you're I, when, are you an administrative assistant? Are you Andy? What do you? Uh, what's your title? Compliance coordinator. Compliance coordinator. Whoa. So it's just compliance. Wow, compliance. <laughs> That's like legal shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Scary. <laughs> My compliance hat is off right now, though, so it's okay. All right, good deal. Are, but, we, are we out of com compliance? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think typically we are all out of compliance. Uh, well, compliance or HR. And Barely <laughs> <that is to be. laughs> but um so yeah that was you know this week's philosophical topic i guess you could talk about um but just think about value and you know step your game up if you have to if you're providing that value kudos keep doing it um but never get complacent um so um remember we're still looking for original band submissions so anybody that's out there in the band wants me to take a listen or you want to talk about it on these podcasts let me know um Still filling out 2024, a couple more dates I booked this week. Um, booked some new bands that we haven't had or just came out. So I think um, Billy Squire Tribute, Emotions in Motion, I booked them for a show or two. Um, the Get Lucky, the Loverboy Band. Um, one of the two of them are going to be playing as soon as I think now in like March or now June or July. But I also booked Empires which is an original band, um, Bishop Booker out there. So I booked them. I think they're going to be playing on April 20th. Um, you know, no correlation to 420 or any of that stuff. You know, I, technically, I don't even know what that means. But Yeah, what uh, does that mean? What do you yeah. mean <laughs> But they'll be open up for, I think, back in time. We have compliance here. We got compliance, <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> um, so this week, what do we got going on? Live band karaoke tonight, 7.30 to 10.30. Um, again, get out there early, get your songs in. 
but we had a lot of people um, like even with the extra hour last week Shannon said I think we're um, going to have a hard time getting through almost everybody um, we did have a technical glitch again with our Wi-Fi over there but um, getting better but every week it's just getting busier and busier Barefoot can they, Nation can, what's they that? Play, can they play any song you want Pretty much any song you want. There are a couple that, you know, I've been requesting that they don't have the, you know, I guess the lyrics in the program for, mm. but there are a lot of, like, um, <coughs> some newer Parker McCollum songs that I try. Yeah, I try to sing, you know, a little <laughs> bit up there every week, too. Um, but, you know, Parker McCollum songs or some of the more, the newer songs yeah. are not yet set up on the program he uses. So, But for the most part, there's... I would say quarter million songs to choose from, and I'm seeing the most obscure songs every week. You know, from you, you name it, people are up there playing it. So, like Patsy Cline or something. I mean, can you go back? Oh yeah, you can okay. go back. Yeah, okay, all right. um, like somebody, <laughs> our friends were actually singing. There's a you know, um, the song from Greece, those summer nights. Oh yeah. Apparently, there's a perverted version of that. You know, and how's it go? Oh, I can't even <laughs> remember. We like, have, we have yeah, compliance. compliance <laughs> you know, there'd be a lot of beeping. But if you get a chance to check out those lyrics, you're really? like, "What the hell?" Um, I've never heard it before, but apparently, my mm. you know, Josh and Laura were out there last week and they sang it. And there were a lot of people who knew it, and other people were just kind of like, "What? The fuck did they <laughs> sing it?" Some you know, did I just hear what that. they just said? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. But yeah, along the same lines. Um, but live band karaoke was awesome. Barefoot Nation is out there on Thursday. That's the Kenny Chesney tribute, so I'm looking forward to it. That's his first show for this year. Um, you have to miss the last one, I think, because of COVID. But um, Friday night, huge, huge show. Um, the Tools, um, Cherry Bomb opening up for Messer. And I don't know what kind of music people, Brooke, what kind of music you listen to? Mainly country. Country? Yeah. What about you? Just about everything. All right. Well, Messer is like kind of Daughtry-ish. Um, Cherry Bomb is Joan Jett, and the Tools is Tool. You know, so I love Tool. Um, I used to love Tool back in the day. Yeah, Tool. Uh, I'm a, I'm stoked for the like this Messer band is just unbelievable. So Good. I've been promoting the hell out of them. I can't wait. Friday is going to be huge up there. Does Brooke know who Tool is? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sure she doesn't know who Messer is either, but that's the point. Come on out and check it out. Saturday, more along the lines of what Brooke likes, Aaron Copeland. Um, he's from Burleson. You know, we've been talking a lot about him recently. He just put out, or he's putting out a new album. Um, he just got back from Nashville, you know, mid to late last year, recorded his album, and the studio musicians on his album are the guys from Brooks and Dunn. So oh, they're oh. like Brooks and Dunn's band is actually plays on his album. They're, it's incredible, but he's uh, he just released a new song. I can't remember the name of it, but again, my favorite one is "Baby Needs Some Neon" from that new album. It's incredible, but he's got Billy Joe Baby opening needs up. Some neon. Pretty close, yeah, I know. you know. That, yeah, hey, <laughs> you don't really sound hybrids. country, but you know, <laughs> but along the same lines. Um, but Billy Joe is opening up. Both of them do original music and some covers. So, again, supporting original music out there as well. Um, also, member Saturday, come on out. Um, we have St. Patrick's Day. I guess like the Jameson commercial now because of leap year, the 29th. It went from Friday to Sunday. So, yes. it was supposed to be Saturday if it was a normal year. So, now Jameson is running oh, these commercials. Yeah. Oh. So Jameson is like, man, what happened to Saturday? So to like celebrate St. Patrick's Eve, yeah, know, on Saturday. So yeah, we're doing um, all, uh, all of our places are doing uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yep. So we have drink specials all weekend at Fat Daddy's. If you're going to the pickle parade, come on in after the pickle parade. I'm um, start pre gaming for the show. I have you a know, pickle for, parade every night. Oh my God. <laughs> oh wait a minute, we have compliance. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> um, but pre-game for Aaron Copeland and the Billy Joe show on um, Saturday. But drink specials will be all day Saturday. So if you're attending the Mansfield Pick a Parade, come on out afterwards. Sunday, we have Penny and the Flamethrowers. We have live music on Sunday as well for the real St. Patrick's Day Day. Not St. Patrick's Day Eve, but St. Patrick's Day Day. Penny and the Flamethrowers, they do like rockabilly version of newer music. So they're, I think, playing at 1.30 till they're done so come on out we got like i said drink specials all weekend over there but sunday is going to be a pretty cool day out there the new drinks that i saw they're they're 
Oh my God, the, the cool pictures of them are kind of cool too. Yeah. Um, and if you like lime green, there's a lot of lime green colors in those. Antifreeze um, or something. Yeah, they do have the color of any. That's yeah. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, I actually tried putting some in my uh, Mini Cooper. It's broke down now. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next week we got live band karaoke again on Wednesday. Forever Hendrix, Tommy Katona, his other band. Um, Jimi Hendrix tribute is Thursday. Friday is Incognito. And then Saturday of next week, um, well, you know, Incognito, they play everything. And I think um, Terry might actually be back on drums now. I know he had um, some surgery a couple of weeks ago, but Incognito always brings it. Saturday, we have Animals, the Maroon 5 tribute is back again, but um, huge night of music because we've got a band named Goo, the Goo Goo Dolls is um, opening up, and then Reflective Soul, um, and then Animals will go on. So three incredible bands, and like I said, the Animals band. Goo Goo Dolls were pretty badass too back in the day i was gonna ask i know that band is it like the actual band that's gonna be playing no they I call them a band named goo they're a uh, tribute to the goo goo dolls okay. but they're incredible like the yeah. two of them and reflective soul is the collective soul tribute yeah collective soul is cool too. um the three of them pay up together i'm really looking forward to it it's very similar music but the guy who sings maroon five for or animal we were floored at his voice. He sounds exactly like Adam Levine. Come on. Like, incredible. So they played on a Thursday, brought a great crowd, and everybody was like, why aren't they playing on Friday I'm, or, or on a weekend? And I'm like, just give me time. I got to, you know, be able to coordinate this. But Saturday, um, huge show. So Animals with a band named Goo and Reflective Soul. That one, because we got three bands, it'll be starting early at 7.30, um, downbeat is on Saturday, so or yeah, next Saturday. So um, be on the lookout for that. Um, our TV wiring over there at Fat Daddy's got done, but there's a little bit bit of a glitch in the system, so we required a new software um, to be brought in. It still works, but it's a little clunky right now for the staff. But we, you know, ready for bar March Madness. We can have different games on every TV out there. So huge upgrade being done over there. Um, and um, Sindustry Nights is also Wednesday night. So tonight, come in and get your Sindustry card if you're in the service industry. We open up, you know, till midnight for you tonight. So we got drink specials and food specials for all you people in the service industry. So it's a secret menu. Yeah, it's a secret, you know, and secret pricing. So it is actually pretty, um, pretty good deals that we have. Um, Four six, um, April six. We have next big show coming up. That ticket, the link is on, um, I guess Facebook now, our website and all. But it's um, the Arena Rock show, which has got um, Scotty Austin. You know Scotty Austin from Saving Abel. He's coming back out. We have the Lonely Ones. We have Love to Hate, and then followed by the Arena Rock show um, that's going on. It's a it's tribute fan. to seventies, eighties music. It's it's going to be a huge night out there, and that's another one that's going to be starting because you know basically four bands playing. Um, um, tickets are available now. I think it's twenty five dollars a person for that one, yeah. um, and we have you know a few tables left. Come on out or again, reserve your tables because that night it's going to be you know first come first serve at the door, and um, everybody will be required. So there won't be any of this. You know if you come in before seven o'clock, yeah. it's free. You know, if you don't have a ticket, you're shit out of luck. I was looking um, for tickets today, and I, sh I sent you the uh, an email about it. Yeah, it's about yeah. So sales are looking up, and um, just that's going to be a huge show. But um, I think it's somewhere around six thirty. The show is going to start, so we're going to have four hours plus five hours of um, some incredible music out there. So um, don't forget Thompson's. We got four floors for your entertainment. Um, but we are working on something right now to partner with the Riata and Fort Worth Club and all for an event in May. Um, more details to come, but be on the lookout for that. Um, but we have the Speakeasy, you know, obviously in the basement, the bookstore level, the event center available on the third floor, and then the cigar lounge on the or third floor, second floor, first floor basement. But um, Great place. If you haven't been out there, I keep talking about it. Everybody goes out there. They're like, oh, I didn't know that was, um, you know, part of Angemar. And um, they're kind of floored every time they, you know, 
experience it out there so if you haven't been you got to get out there have you been out there oh yeah it's really cool have you had drinks out there no no <laughs> then have you really experienced that? <laughs> no, have you been out there? I haven't yet. You have not been out there either. No. Good God. What I'm God. talking about? I've seen what? bottles. I haven't actually drank out of them. What? <laughs> Thompson's Bookstore. Look, we have, you know, two of the four employees in here haven't even been there. So, got to get out there. It's enjoy. One of the top places in Fort Worth, for sure. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, check out the reviews and, you know, you're actually not lying, you know, because all of the reviews and all of the awards from like Fort Worth Weekly. Throughout the years, it mentions, you know, um, Thompson's being the place to go. We just won again, uh, best uh, best bar. Are we even allowed to mention that yet? Or Yeah, just uh, as of a couple days ago. Yep. All right, so there you go. We did win um, another award this year for it. So um, you got to go check out Thompson's. Remember, Marksman Gun Stores. We have Colleen, Wichita Falls, Mansfield, and Granberry. Um, we have Gun in a Month specials out there. While supplies last, and they go pretty quick. Um, I think we're two weeks in, and we only have a few of them left, but um, I think Wichita Falls got a Taurus 357 out there. Um, Granberry's got a CZ Scorpion. Um, Colleen's got a SIG 320, and I cannot remember um, what Mansfield's got. But great deals out there. They're discounted, and only while supplies last. So um, check out one of our gun stores. Taurus, also remember... Taurus, I think. Isn't that the Taurus? In Mansfield? Oh, it's a different tour. It's not the 357, but you're right. I think they do have a different Taurus out there. Um, but, we, you know, we talked about car shows. Remember, March 23rd, out at Summit, a huge car show. We're co-sponsoring with Summit out there on 20 in Grand Prairie. Well, Arlington. I guess that's Arlington. It's technically Arlington. Yeah, so at 20 and 360 over there um, on a Saturday. Yeah. Yes. Right. What time is the nine show? Nine to one. Nine to one. We're expecting seven hundred fifty to a thousand. Yes, I will be. All right. Are you really? Yep. Okay. Um, are we going to be selling shirts and merch out I there as well? I believe so. Okay. I wouldn't take my word for that, but I, I believe so. Well, you ain't compliant, so yeah. you wouldn't lie. <laughs> 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 so come on out. You know, like it, again, people are asking. It's a, just a great day. Hopefully, the weather will be beautiful as you know it's recently been. But you know, seven hundred fifty to a thousand vehicles out there. Um, we'll have, you know, merchandise out there. You could come, stop by, say hi to Brooke. Um, you know, maybe she'll sign a hat or something for you now that she's, you know. Infamous. Infamous, yeah. She's out, uh, she's podcast famous. <laughs> um, and then don't forget, coming soon, construction on Capone's Drinkery, Drink Easy and Drinkery. Sports Bar. Drinkery. <laughs> Drinkery. Um, Drink Easy and Sports Bar in Burleson. Um, you know, the building was torn down last week. Sign one up, coming soon. So we're going to have a pretty badass-themed um, sports bar out there. Not like your normal sports bar. Um, going to be small, intimate. Just think, you know, Capone's, Al Capone's hideout mixed with um, sports. Yeah. That's all we could kind of say about that. But be on a lookout. That's right next to kind of in the area where Mellow Mushroom is. It's called the Lumberyard, I think. There's a lot of talk about it right now. Lumberyard. Yeah, there is. I mean, we've and got... I think... Uh, 1,100, 1,200 no, followers last week. 1,400. Oh, shit. All righty. We just posted that. So be on the lookout. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked about, you know, Capone's, but you be involved right from the beginning as construction starts. So um, the sign's up. You know, be on the lookout for it out there. What's that drink called? The, the Reach one? Around. Oh, yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Um, Can't do that. And we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be selling <laughs> drinks to, for you to be able to take out walking the streets of um burleson as well they're yeah, allowing that as well so yeah. um we encourage a lot of day drinking night drinking um sports and all of that so um construction is set to begin on that very soon and i mean very soon we're just having a little snafu with the permit but um you know we're ready to roll on that and i think we're here in somewhere between october november december time frame um that we're targeting to be open hopefully you know and enough time to prepare for the Super Bowl. So um, that's it. That's week um, nine, you know, of these um, WTF podcasts. So, um, you know, thank you for, you know, your input. You know, we got Jody, Brooke again, compliance. Come out and see her at the car show. Clinton for all of his work as usual. People Other are dying night. to get in here. I mean, the, oh, yeah. that's why we got a live audience. Let's see if we can get our audience uh, participation up in comments yeah. and all. And <laughs> let us know what you think about that with two guests that are out here today. Yeah. But, 
Um, other than that, appreciate you watching again, and we'll be seeing you soon. Peace.